Tonight, we're going to be talking about the Springfield Armory Hellcat. Are you ready? Stand by. So before we even talk about the product, we need to talk about the brand Springfield Army. A lot of commenters on YouTube are going to want to comment on what happened with the brand in Illinois in 2017. They also did a bunch of stuff afterwards to kind of counter that and take steps in the right direction. I'm gonna remain completely silent because this is not a video on Springfield Armory. This is a video on the Hellcat. And before we go any further, I do need to go ahead and say that this is a testing and evaluation model that was sent to me by Springfield Armory and it is on loan and I thank them for that. I'm gonna go ahead and ruin it and say that this is gonna be a really positive review and it's gonna sound like I'm shilling for them, but if you've watched any of my videos, I try to be as objective as possible and all of the positive things I'm gonna say is legitimately upheld within the product. I promise I'm not shilling, I actually am enthusiastic about this pistol. And to prove it to you, here we go. So when most people think of Springfield Armory and their striker guns, they think about the XD series, and a lot of people who are uninitiated into guns really like the XD series because it brings a lot of safety to something as dangerous as a firearm in the form of some nanny features such as a grip safety, a trigger safety, a loaded chamber indicator, and a striker position indicator. But if you hang around in the firearm space long enough, you begin to crave simplicity because all those features are just things that can potentially break. So those very features which ultimately sell a lot of handguns to people who don't really know what they're looking at end up being the very same features that drive people away from the brand. And I was one of those uninitiated people. My very first handgun was a Springfield Armory XD9, which I put about 1,500 rounds through. I started my competitive shooting career with it shooting IDPA. I still really like the gun. I thought it was a fine gun. But we're not talking about the XD9. We're talking about the Hellcat. And if you examine the Hellcat, there is not an XD anywhere on this pistol. As close as you get is the cannon roll mark on the top of the slide and there is nothing that says XD about this, and all of the nanny features that I just spoke about are missing. The closest thing we get to nanny features on this specific pistol is a witness hole at the top of the chamber and a dingus-style trigger safety. And as a result, what we get is a very feature-rich pistol. The Hellcat is pretty much good to go in its stock configuration. It should come as no surprise to you that this is Springfield Armory's response to the SIG P365, so it's roughly the size of a SIG P365. So let's jump in. First, the gun comes in a cardboard box that is suitable for throwing away, which you're like, well, they really cheaped out on you there. Where's my plastic box that I can ignore with all the other ones? Well, they give you a gun rug that is actually very usable. I would rather have a gun rug such as this rather than another plastic box that I never ever use because you can actually bring the pistol to the range in something like this. The gun comes with two magazines as we discussed with witness marks starting at the four round point. They're roughly the same size, although if you put them back to back like that, you can see just how much of a difference that base plate makes. But the magazines are very good. The biggest downside that I have for this gun is trying to load these magazines tears up your thumbs. So you're really gonna to wanna to use an Uplula mag loader just if you're gonna make an extended range session out of shooting this. If you don't have a Maglula just for this gun alone, I would recommend getting one. There's a link in the description if you don't have one. And touching on features that are not on the gun, it does not have a grip safety, a striker position indicator, or a loaded chamber indicator. So this is not an XD pistol in at least the classic form that the XD pistols have taken. But one feature that comes on this pistol that was very forward thinking is the recoil assembly actually stands proud of the slide. It's roughly flush with the crown of the barrel and it works as a standoff device. As demonstrated in the B-roll, if you bear down with this gun, the recoil assembly does function as a standoff device and the striker will release, making contact shooting a thing, which is the only semi-automatic that I'm aware that does that. 
Also worth noting is there's some kind of rail where you could probably hang a very small light or laser off of. I'm not a big accessory rail kind of guy, but for those of you that are, your itty bitty lights and lasers will fit on whatever rail this is. Now to get into the things that I am most interested in about this pistol, and that is going to be the grip. They use something that Springfield is calling the adaptive grip technology, which is a series of little pyramids of different heights that when you actually touch it, it doesn't feel too abrasive on your skin, but when you actually bear down on the pistol, it bites you back and it does not budge. This is probably my favorite texture on any plastic striker gun I've tried that was not a custom stipple job. Now, as far as the grip is actually concerned, I actually prefer the extended magazine. If this were my carry gun, this is how I would carry it because it does give you a home for your pinky. And once you do kind of grab hold of it, it's kind of like the SIG Legion where there's a pronounced kind of hump right there where you kind of lock in with your middle finger under the trigger guard. And it's actually very comfortable in that regard, but it does feel kind of boxy. If you pick up a Glock Gen 5 and it feels almost like a uh, two by four with eased edges, this would be like a one by two with eased edges. It is kind of boxy, but that's not a bad thing because it makes it very easy to put straight to the rear pressure across the front strap and the back strap spreads out the recoil across your palm because it is, despite being a micro compact, a pretty easy to shoot gun. Now when shooting it, I shot about 500 rounds over about four different range sessions. It does wear out your wrist just like any small gun trying to hold it flat and bear down on it and shoot fast with it. But it is a very shootable gun. But as you can see, the trigger guard is very well relieved. You have good access on the grip tang. It gets you pretty close to the bore. So it has a relatively low bore axis, has a bit of a grip tang, so slide bite's not gonna be an issue. And when you are grabbing the pistol, all of the controls are exactly where they need to be. You have excellent trigger reach. You've got a memory pad right here at the front of the frame, which makes a nice place for you to put your finger when it's not inside the guard on the trigger. Picking up this gun, it's not gonna blow you away with how sculpted it is, but it is a very comfortable gun in the hand. But when you get it on the range, I think that's where it really starts to shine. Now, as far as the trigger pull, weight is concerned it's about five and a quarter pounds on this specific model so i'm guessing that's probably a five to five and a half pound trigger and the quality of the trigger is not bad it has a very positive very pronounced wall that is very easy to stage on it's very hard you get a little bit of creep and then it breaks just like many other striker pistols in the segment there is a bit of over travel not a whole lot it's not bad. The reset on the trigger is pretty good. It kind of throws your finger forward a little bit. It's not quite as positive as something like a Glock, but it's actually very shootable. I was able to do pretty good work when I was shooting this gun rapidly. I had a couple targets at seven yards. I was able to actually get the bullet holes to touch as fast as I could run the trigger. As far as the slide machining is concerned, you've got over the top serrations right there at the back of the gun and some at the front of the gun. So you can manipulate the slide at the front of the gun like I like to do. The sights actually have a rear ledge. If you want to do holster or belt or boot manipulations, you can actually do it with the Hellcat. And one thing that I really like about the gun is it's pretty much understated. It says Hellcat right there. It's got Springfield Armory right there. And probably the most obnoxious thing is just the crossed cannons logo right there, but all of the etching is very shallow. So it just kind of disappears unless the shape speak for itself, which I actually appreciate the aesthetics on it. It almost looks like a little baby Glock. And now I need to talk to you about these sights. The sights provide a front tritium with a day glow yellow surround that is luminescent and will hold a charge of a flashlight for about 10 minutes with a blacked out rear sight with a U-notch. And you notice on that U-notch, the bottom of the notch is circular and it is underscored with a white line. So immediately I thought of the typical Glock sights with these. So being a fiber optic sight snob, I thought for sure I was going to hate these sights, but I don't. These sights are actually really intuitive and easy to use. The white line under the sight actually works as a nice cup that you drop this yellow ball in in good lighting. Shooting this gun side to side with my carry gun, which has an orange day glow front sight with a tritium vial, I actually realized that I much, much prefer this gun. And speaking to that, when I backed this gun up to 50 yards, I was able to ring C-Zone Steel 10 out of 13 times. 
with a three inch barrel and iron sights. Now, as far as performance is concerned, and I alluded to, the accuracy is fantastic. You saw that I was able to ring steel at 50 yards with this thing. I went six for six on a 25 yard plate rack. The pistol just works, and that's due in large part to the sights. And the shape of the trigger is a flat face trigger, and it makes it pretty easy to pull to the rear. The gun is set up to shoot right out of the box. Now I didn't test the mechanical accuracy in like a ransom rest or do any bench rested groups or anything like that, but all the features we just went over, the shape of the grip, the shape of the trigger, and how the sights work makes a gun that's very practically accurate. And as we talked about, the recoil on this thing is pretty mild. Now this gun is a micro compact and a shorter barrel gun is going to be louder. If you're shooting at an indoor range, expect this gun to be very, very loud. It's probably gonna be one of the louder guns that you experience. And in that same vein, I do need to put a disclaimer out there. If you're new to the firearm space, micro compacts are not particularly easy to shoot well. You see me shooting this gun reasonably well in this video, but I'm a master level shooter in USPSA. Don't expect just because some guy on YouTube can shred with the gun that you're gonna be able to pick it up and do the same thing. Because ultimately the mission of this gun is not shooting steel at 50 yards, it is 10 yards and in. And it's gonna do that really well for you. And another concern I had about this gun was that when I did shoot it for a longer range session, the first day I took it out it was about 200 rounds. My wrists actually were pretty sore from holding the gun flat and trying to shoot it fast. So it is physically fatiguing to shoot as opposed to a softer shooting larger gun. Some other concerns with the pistol are not gonna be just this pistol, it's gonna be any micro compact. This is a short gripped pistol and it is also pretty narrow. It's gonna make a pistol that is pretty difficult to draw from the holster if you carry inside the waistband. Not impossible, just a little bit more dip difficult than a wider double stack pistol. And speaking of holsters, the holster availability as I filmed this in early November 2019 is not quite there yet with the Hellcat, but it is a brand new product and it's likely to pick up steam with the holster makers as it continues to be a commercial success, which this gun honestly deserves to be. And as I already talked about, this gun is loud. I shot it with some coworkers who are not gun guys and they couldn't get over just how loud the gun was at an outdoor range using range ammo. So it is going to be deafening at an indoor range, but again, that's not the gun's fault. That's any gun this size is gonna be that loud. Now, some of the other issues with this gun are just going to be conjecture. I have not encountered any problems whatsoever with this gun in the four to 500 rounds that I put through it when reviewing it, but Striker drag is now something the entire internet is keenly aware of, especially people who watch the Military Arms channel. This gun is not immune to striker drag. All of the brass casings that I recovered from this gun had striker drag, and that's a concern about potentially breaking the striker. I've not heard of any issues of anybody breaking strikers on Hellcats yet, and I've got to believe, based on all of the engineering that went into this gun, Springfield probably accounted for that in the design of their strikers. Time's gonna tell on that front. And the only other thing, and this is a nitpick, is the extractor right there is pretty tiny. I, I don't anticipate any issues with it, but most guns have bigger extractors, so I just assumed that this was gonna have a bigger extractor rather than this little itty bitty one you see right there. And a final concern, and this is only gonna be applicable to the optics ready platform if you're using the optic, is the peephole in the top of the chamber is likely to throw gas up, which may or may not smoke the lens, depending on how far back the optic sits. Now, Springfield has given a very generous platform in front of the rear sight cut, where a smaller optic is not likely to get up to the breech face where the glass is gonna get smoked, but it might. So that brings us to one of the favorite tropes of the internet, where you should leave your carry gun totally stock, if you want a better trigger or better sights or better grip, then you should have just bought a gun that comes with all those features anyway. And the entire internet scratches their head because nobody has been making that pistol, maybe except up until now. I think the Hellcat really gets almost all of that right. The only complaint about it for me is I wish the trigger was a little bit more shootable at like a four and a half pound trigger. That would have been a little bit nicer for me, but I understand that they're marketing this to the masses and they need a safer trigger, especially on a striker gun. So the trigger pull weight is probably my single biggest complaint about the gun other than trying to load these magazines, which will gobble up your thumbs. So all in all, I think the Hellcat is a really solid little offering. I've really enjoyed my time with this pistol 
And honestly, I could carry something like this and not feel undergunned in any situation just based on my ability to reach out and shoot it 50 yards with the darn thing. So, so I appreciate you guys for watching this far. Please hit that like button if you haven't done so already. Springfield Armory, thanks so much for sharing your Hellcat with me. I think it's a great pistol. And for all the rest of you, I'll catch you on the next one. Take care, guys. Thank you.